All right, guys, so Vinny here with the Eastwood Garage. We got some uh, basic eighth inch aluminum plates in front of us today. So we're gonna go over some uh, prepping and some machine setup for an alternating current job and uh, see what we can get going here. All right, so we switched from DC TIG on our stainless direct current. We're gonna go over to AC TIG. This is an alternating current, which is what we're gonna use to do our aluminum job here. Trigger mode again, 2T, 4T, or foot pedal. We're gonna be running our foot pedal for this job today, so we'll select that. And again, shows you all the versatile settings that you have here. You can change everything, customize everything for your job. Um, I really enjoy this digital display here. It kind of makes it really easy to understand exactly what you're doing. So basic settings that we have here for today, our start amp is down at 30, our upslope's at a second, our peaks are running about 175 amps for this eighth inch material here. And let's go to our frequency. So we have our frequency set at about 90 and our AC balance is set at about 30% right now. These are pretty neutral settings. Uh, the material is pretty clean for the most part, so not too much prep work involved. I'll show you guys some minor stuff and then we'll get to it. So what we have in front of us here is two eighth inch plates of aluminum. Um, we're currently running a 4043 filler rod and one of the most important things when it comes to aluminum is cleanliness. So what I like to do before I weld any piece of aluminum is clean it with a wire brush or whatever your means are. Um, one thing that I do like to touch base on is when I'm cleaning this with a wire brush, I'm always pushing one direction to kick the outsides out of the material instead of going back and forth and you might end up with some dust or you know a bit of grit and grime inside the weld puddle which is going to throw you off when you go to do your bead. So we'll run a couple passes over this, expose some raw aluminum and then we'll light up and we'll start our pass. All right, so now that our material is pretty clean, we'll wipe it down real quick. All right, make sure we're cleaning our joint there. Position this and we'll fire up here. So one thing to touch base on is I switched from the glass cup back to a ceramic. One of the things that Makes me a little bit nervous is if you get any popping or spattering and some hot aluminum touches your glass cup, there's a chance that it's going to shatter it. So we'll switch to a basic ceramic cup for this and uh, we'll light up and show you what happens here. So typically when I start an aluminum pass, I like to get my tungsten on the material. I'll light up, I'll let the puddle uh, turn into a liquid. And then again, same concept as stainless. We're going to wait for that liquid to appear before we start introducing our filler wire and controlling our bead. So we'll light up. Kind of splitting the difference on the two pieces of material. And we'll start our first bead there. And we're just going to roll right into it. And again, when you terminate, it's important to go slowly so you can avoid any cratering in your material. And then the same concept applies when you're starting a bead. We're going to start about two beads back on our previous pass. We'll light up, wait for it to, to turn into a liquid. Once we have our puddle, we'll start introducing our wire and we'll continue our pass here. So again, start back two beads. Light up slowly. Establish a puddle. Once the puddle's there, we're introducing our wire and we're moving. About 85% down on my pedal right now and I'm just feeding my filler wire so I achieve the bead consistency that I'm looking for. And again, we'll terminate real slow to avoid any cratering on our bead. It's gonna be a decent aluminum pass there. And then when we start our second pass, we're gonna apply the same logic where we backstep about one and a half to two beads. We'll light up on that, turn our puddle into a liquid there, and then we'll start cruising from there. So about two beads back, light up slowly, wait for your puddle to liquefy. Once you have a puddle, you can start introducing your filler rod. Uh, we're going to switch to a little bit thicker wire here just to form the beads a little more. That was 16th. We're going to run a 1 8 wire for the rest of this pass. So again, two beads back. Light up slowly. And we're just feeding our aluminum flyer right into the edge of the puddle here, approaching the end. 
So we're going to build it up a little bit. And then we'll terminate slowly. To avoid any cratering. All right, guys, so we got this plate here welded up all the way across. Um, the alternating current is a little loud. Might seem hard to hear me over the welding. So what I want to do here is to show you guys kind of a little bit of technique that I use when I weld aluminum. So one thing to keep in mind that's pretty important when you're welding aluminum is where you're positioning your filler rod. So once you create your, your arc and your puddle here, the last thing I want to do is leave my filler rod inside the heat area here because what ends up happening is my filler rod's going to ball up and ball back and it's it's really not going to stay pure and by the time I drop it in there you're going to get a really messy look. There's going to be a bunch of crud inside your weld. Um, so it's important when you're running your bead and dabbing with your filler wire on aluminum that you're re retrieving your aluminum wire all the way out and then reintroducing it into the puddle every time you want to lay a bead. This, this allows you to get a really nice consistent look. The other thing that's important is we're not really shoving this in too much. We're kind of just riding the edge of the puddle and feeding it in until the bead consistency builds up. The profile's there. And then we'll pull our wire out. We'll move over to our next spot and we'll fill our wire again. Again, it's important, this aluminum is a very thin, brittle material, so it will blow back very easily at any signs of heat, and it makes it very difficult to create a nice bead profile when your filler wire is all jacked up to begin with. So again, there's a little bit more that goes into the prep work and the setup for aluminum, but once you actually get welding with it, it seems to be a little bit of a more forgiving material for you guys. So here we have a open corner joint here. So what we're gonna do here is light up on this corner that's already been rolled and then uh, I'll show you some technique of where I position my wire to insert it into the beads here. So we'll light up slow. And there's my puddle. So again, my filler wire is coming all the way out. And then it goes into the puddle just enough to create the profile that I want. And then I'm retrieving the wire all the way out again. We're going to terminate slowly, avoid any cratering, and that'll be one pass. When we go down to our second pass here, we're going to apply the same technique where we start back two beads, one and a half to two beads. We'll arc up on that bead. Once we have our puddle established, we'll move forward. Terminate slow avoid any cratering and we'll do our last pass the same way All right, guys, so that was some basic tips and tricks on welding aluminum. Uh, it was a real pleasure working with this Take 200 LCD from Eastwood. Very versatile machine, ran great, no issues. If you guys need anything else, any questions, any more tips and tricks that you guys are interested in, you can reach me on Instagram at VC Metalworks with an X, or you can check out the guys at Eastwood at eastwood.com.